Agenda. Good morning and welcome to the program. Australia has sent search teams to Indonesia where 180 asylum seekers are feared dead after their vessel sank off the coast of Java. Now, the search teams are very pessimistic about the prospects of finding more survivors given rough conditions in the area. Joining me on the program this morning to discuss this latest asylum seeker tragedy, we have Labor MP Andrew Lee here in the Canberra studio. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, Karen. And from Melbourne, Liberal frontbencher Senator Mitch Fifield, Senator... Good morning to you. It was simply a matter of time, wasn't it, that we are going to see something like this? Well, sadly, since uh, the current government changed their border protection policies in August 2008, uh, we've seen over uh, 14,000 uh, people come by boat, courtesy of people smugglers. Uh, we've seen over 260 boats. Uh, this is a tragedy, uh, but it's hard to get away from the fact that uh, the uptake uh, in the people smuggler business uh, happened after the current government changed their policies, after they dismantled uh, temporary protection visas, uh, offshore processing. Sadly, uh, this sort of tragedy uh, is uh, much more likely. Senator Fifield, uh, hundreds of um, asylum seekers have now died in this uh uh, amid this political impasse in Australia, and we've seen the... I'll, I'll come to the government's position in a moment, but both sides of politics support offshore processing, and yet that's not being implemented. Some One of the, the sides has to move here, doesn't it? Well, the Coalition has always supported offshore processing. We put it in place when we were in office and it proved effective uh, in deterring people smugglers from going about their trade. Uh, the current government said uh, when they were in opposition that uh, offshore processing was immoral. Uh, they dismantled offshore processing. Uh, it was only in the face of overwhelming evidence that they had got their policy wrong that they belatedly conceded uh, that offshore processing had merit. Uh, we then saw uh, the proposal for uh, East Timor offshore processing, which never came to anything. Uh, we then had the half-baked uh, Malaysian solution. Uh, half-baked, uh, but also uh, a bad model. Uh, when the coalition uh, had offshore processing, we essentially controlled the facts on the ground in places like Nauru. Uh, what we are advocating is that there should be a base level of protection, and that should be that a nation that uh, does offshore processing for Australia uh, should be a signatory to the UN uh, Convention for refugees. Uh, we put forward that very simple amendment uh, and the government rejected that. The reason that there isn't offshore processing today is because this government dismantled it and they've only had half-baked uh, proposals uh, to uh, bring it back. Andrew Lee, the government's been unable to deliver on the policy it wants. Why not say, OK, something's got to happen. We, we can't see tragedies like this again. Um, we're, we've got to Cardinal Pell of the Catholic Church saying... It's difficult to see any alternative to the government and opposition promptly agreeing on effective offshore, offshore deterrence. Australians do not want to see more tragedies like this. Some compromise has got to be reached. Why not implement the coalition policy and be done with it, at least to put something in place? Kieran, I have to be honest with you this morning. I think when boats are scouring the sea looking for 180 men, women and children who have died, it is not the time to be playing politics on immigration. It's, it's, no, it's, so not, it's, not it's, it's not about politics. It's not about the politics. What I'm asking you about is a way forward, because we're talking about the human rights of people, but then we're seeing these fatalities. Surely some compromise has got to be reached where the parties put the politics to one side and, and say, OK, we will adopt your approach and, and, and move forward. I, I'm just being clear about what I'm going to say this morning. I, I'm not going to follow Mitch in, in attacking what the Coalition has done. There is much to attack in the Coalition, but today is not the day for that. So, uh, this, when we put forward the legislation into policy. Parliament, uh, I raised the issue of drownings. You read those reports on CVEX, on the Christmas Island uh, tragedies. Uh, these are hideous uh, events that, uh, that have ta taken place. Uh, the, uh, the deaths of uh, small children as their mothers held them out of the water in Christmas, Christmas Island. Uh, that, for me, is why it is absolutely important uh, to have a set of policies that send strong okay. disincentives to getting on boats and make sure but you don't that have these that. leaking boats Unfortunately, aren't sent to Australia. Let, let's go back to uh, Senator Firefield. You've heard what Andrew Lee has said. Um, your, your response to that? Well, I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think anyone is playing politics uh, with this tragic situation, uh, but there are facts, uh, and the facts are that uh, 
the incidence of people smuggling has increased dramatically uh, since the Labor government changed border protection policies in August 2008. That's a fact. Uh, it's also a fact that uh, the people smuggling trade essentially stopped when we're in office. Uh, it's also a fact that there have been some significant tragedies uh, with many people losing their lives uh, since um, this evil trade uh, increased in frequency. Uh, what we're talking about here, uh, what are the right policies to stop this evil trade? Now, uh, you will hear government ministers say often that they want to break the people smugglers business model, uh, but it's also a fact that it is the current government that gave the people smugglers their business model. By abolishing temporary protection visas, by abolishing offshore processing, that gave the people smugglers a product to sell. And we can see uh, ministers, uh, as we've seen over the last few days, uh, refer to uh, the people smugglers as scum, which of course they are, but they can thump their chests as much as they like that won't stop the boats from coming. What will stop the boats from coming is bringing back temporary protection visas, bringing back fair income offshore processing with appropriate safeguards. That's what okay, needs to well, happen. I'll, That's I'll, not playing I'll, politics. I'll, I'll put this uh, to you one more time. Andrew Lee, give you an, an option to, uh, to respond. Obviously, the government uh, and the ministers, the Prime Minister, will make the call at the end of the day, and it's beyond your remit on that. But it just seems odd to me that uh, you know the two major parties support this process, the coalition standing firm on that, um, I, I just don't see why the, the government would not say, OK, let's adopt your policy and hopefully, fingers crossed, it, it works. Because it's not going to work, Kieran. We have very clear evidence on, on that, that uh, Nauru didn't deter people smugglers uh, and that the best way to uh, put in place strong disincentives was the government's Malaysia okay. agreement. But All today right. is a day for recognising this tragedy, uh, not for playing politics in the way Mitch, I'm afraid, okay, is doing. OK, let's move on. I want to talk about Julian Assange, uh, another issue, very different issue, of course, but a number of public figures have um, called on Kevin Rudd to make sure Julian Assange is protected from rendition to the US. USA. Uh, Senator Fifield, would you endorse that? Uh, Malcolm Fraser among the signatories to this open letter? Well, every Australian citizen who uh, finds themselves the subject of legal proceedings overseas is entitled to uh, the full consular assistance uh, from the Australian Government, and that certainly should be happening. Uh, I think we need to be careful in the case of uh, Mr Assange that we uh, don't prejudge uh, what may happen in Sweden. Uh, it's hard to guess a few uh, steps down the track. Uh, what happens there? What happens if he goes to the UK? What happens beyond that? Um, uh, these, are, Sorry, if he goes from the UK to Sweden, I mean. Um, uh, the, these are hard things to, uh, to try and anticipate in advance. Uh, but uh, I think it's important to, to hark back to uh, when uh, the WikiLeaks uh, cables uh, first came into public uh, prominence, uh, that the Prime Minister uh, said that uh, Mr Assange had uh, committed a crime. She uh, didn't specify what crime uh, or in what country. Uh, she still hasn't done so. Uh, I think we need to be uh, careful uh, not to uh, prejudge, uh, to let uh, the legal processes take their course, but uh, obviously, as an Australian citizen, he uh, should be given full consular assistance. Uh, Andrew Lee, should Mr Rudd be doing more uh, to protect Mr Assange's rights here? Kieran, Julian Assange is getting the same consular assistance that any of us would expect to get if we were charged with a crime overseas. Um, but it's also important to recognise the context in which WikiLeaks is operating. Uh, WikiLeaks and News of the World have much in common. They believe that there sh we should live in a world where no one has a right to confidential information. And in the world of diplomacy, that's an enormously dangerous suggestion. We know that the alternative to diplomacy uh, is war. Uh, Julian Assange himself said news of the world didn't go far enough, and I guess to me that illustrates uh, a serious problem in the WikiLeaks method of operation. So yes, absolutely, every consular assistance, um, but I don't have a great deal of sympathy for the WikiLeaks me method okay. of operation. Andrew Lee, Senator Firefield, thanks gentlemen uh, for this morning, appreciate it. We're now going to cross Thank Thank to uh, Adelaide, you. and the Green spokesman on immigration, Senator Hanson Young, is standing by.